promised land, Moses knew that they wouldn't be there very long. He'd had experience with them over 40 years. They turned down the opportunity of being with God on the mount as they could have been, had they been righteous enough. And even before they went into the land, he spoke to them and he said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you soon, soon shall utterly perish from off the land before, as soon as they go into it, they won't be there very long, in other words. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathens, whither the Lord shall lead you. I think this is a sad story of Israel. You start following them and hope that they're going to come out on top and be ahead each time, but it's been the story from the beginning. Moses knew they wouldn't make it. When Lehi brought his colony to this land, he knew they wouldn't make it. Nephi saw in vision they wouldn't. The Jaredites didn't. The Mulekites didn't. And it's left to our day in our time to finally, hopefully, get Israel gathered unto Christ. That's one of the major messages of the Book of Mormon is gathering Israel to Christ. I'd like to go back just a minute to what Moses said. He tells them when they're scattered they're going to serve gods who are not neither see nor hear nor smell, and they're made of wood. It's sort of like the material gods that are being worshipped in our day and age. And then he gives this promise. But if from thence, from the area where they are scattered, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And when thou art in tribulation, and all these things come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, and he says, For the Lord God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. Now Moses, of course, was for all Israel, the same as Isaiah prophesies for all Israel. And his promise goes out to all of Israel, wherever they are. And it's still the same. Those who seek the Lord with all their heart and with all their minds will find him. Now the theme of the Book of Mormon so often is the gathering to Christ. In nearly every passage where the reference is made of gathering Israel into their lands of inheritance, it's also in connection with their being gathered to Christ. A year ago I took the Book of Mormon, I thought, well, I'm going to go through this Book of Mormon and just follow the idea of hope in Christ and write down the passages that refer to what we must do to have hope in him, to come to him. And I just about copied the whole book. So I decided that's uh, too much work because so much of the book is centered around Christ and how we come to him and have hope in him. So I just have a few scriptures that apply to Israel and being gathered to Christ. 1 Nephi 19, verse 15. This is where Nephi is quoting from Zenos, and it's concerning all of Israel. And he says, When that day cometh that they no more turn aside their hearts against the Holy One of Israel, then will he remember the covenants he made with their fathers. This idea of turning their hearts aside from Christ. Yea, then will he remember the isles of the sea. Yea, and all the people who are of the house of Israel will I gather in, saith the Lord. This inclusive promise to all of Israel when they read, do not turn their hearts aside from him, they will be gathered in. Lehi speaks to all of Israel, although he applies it more to his own people, when he compares the house of Israel to the olive tree that had limbs broken off and scattered throughout the world. He said that after this happens, and he covers several hundred years in one sentence, after the house of Israel shall be scattered, they should be gathered together again. Or in fine, after the Gentiles receive the fullness of the gospel, then the branches from this natural olive tree will be grafted back in. Or in other words, he says, they will come to the knowledge of the true Messiah, their Lord and their Redeemer. Gathering Israel to Christ. To Lehi meant that they would be grafted into Christ, become a part of his program. And so he talked quite a bit about the Lamanites, and Nephi, when he told his brethren what his father meant about the scattering the branches of that wild olive tree, he said that uh, when their descendants, Lehi's descendants, finally got the gospel through the Gentiles, there would be 
four different things that they would know. They would know that they were of Israel, and they would know who their fathers were, and that they were covenant people of the Lord. And then this important item, they would come to the knowledge of the gospel of their Redeemer, and to the very points of his doctrine that they may know how to come unto him and be saved. So the whole purpose of gathering Israel is not just to gather a people. If they can't be gathered to Christ, there's no purpose of gathering. If they can't be care gathered to the efficacy of the atonement, then why gather them? The purpose is to save Israel and to bring them to this knowledge. And then the Book of Mormon says quite a bit about the Jews being gathered to Christ. The Jews, the emphasis that they put there is a little different than the Lamanites. The Lamanites are already gathered to their land. It's not a land matter of gathering them into their land. They need to be brought to Christ. But Jacob says that because of the priestcraft and the iniquity among the Jews, they crucified their Christ, and then they are scattered throughout the world. But he quotes the Lord, Thus saith the Lord, When the day cometh that they shall believe in me, that I am Christ, then have I covenanted with their fathers that they would be restored in the flesh, and they would be gathered back home from their long dispersion. The Jewish people are a little different. Some of them are gathering to Jerusalem, quite a few, and they're not being gathered to Christ, so it's just a bit different with this particular group of Israel. But some of them will become members of the church and believe in Christ before he comes to his country, his people, to save them. The majority of them, though, the mass conversion will be when he's on the Mount of Olives and saves them from their enemies. Nephi sees this because in 2 Nephi 30, verse 7, he says this, the Jews which are scattered also shall begin to believe in Christ, and they be shall begin to gather upon the face of the land, and as many shall believe in Christ shall become a delightsome people. And then he says that at this time, at the time when the layman, I mean, excuse me, <coughs> of all of Lehi's people and the Jews begin to believe, that's the time when the Lord will began his work among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people to bring about the restoration of his people Israel. The covenant people of the Lord are only those who come to Christ, regardless of their heritage, our background, or nation. Remember, in Lehi's dream, most of the people got into the large and spacious building. There are only a few who followed the path to the tree of life. And so not all will accept Christ or come unto him. Nephi makes this interestingly clear in 2 Nephi 30, verse 2. He says, As many of the Gentiles as will repent are the covenant people of the Lord. And as many of the Jews as will not repent will be cast off. For the Lord covenanteth with none, save it be with them that repent and believe in his Son, who is the Holy, one, the Holy One of Israel. So the records then that have come forth from the Book of Mormon are for the purpose of restoring the Jews and the seed of Lehi in particular, but also all of Israel and the Gentiles to the knowledge of Christ. When Israel comes to that covenant, then they're will be able to have the promises fulfilled that the Lord made with them. I'd like to just say a little bit about Christ's coming to the Nephites. You think of the situation when he came, I think it's quite parallel with what we're in today. It seems to be a prototype of what his second coming will be. There had been great destructions upon the land. You remember there were the three days of darkness and all the destruction. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And the, <clears throat> excuse me, the voice came to them in the darkness, and he told them all the cities that he had destroyed and why he destroyed them, because of their iniquities and killing the prophets. But he says this, All ye that are spared, because you are more righteous, will ye not now return unto me and repent of your sins and be converted, that I may heal you? He says, Come unto me, and ye shall have eternal life, because his arm of mercy is extended. I think that may be sort of the, what it will be like in his second coming. Those who are more righteous will withstand all of the destruction and be ready to be there to meet him. There's one scripture that is 
really quite sad in many ways. It's in chapter 10 of the book of 3rd Nephi. Start with verse 4. Again, this is the Lord Jesus Christ and his voice coming through to the people who have been spared. And he said, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how oft have I gathered thee, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you. You think of the history of the Nephite people. They were gathered and nourished many times. There were many areas of pro when they were righteous. King Benjamin's people, there were some under Alma. There were uh, several different groups as we follow through who did come to Christ and were righteous. And he did nourish them and he did gather them. So there were those who he did gather. Verse 5, And again, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel who have fallen. Then he extends it to Jerusalem. Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, ye that dwell at Jerusalem, as ye that have fallen. Yea, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens, and ye would not. The many times that Christ has held out his hand and wanted to gather Israel and give them his blessings, they refused. But then there's this promise. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart. We know that in 4th Nephi they did that. He was able to gather them under his wings and give them the blessings. And that's the blessing that's held out to us in our day, at this time preparing for the second coming of Christ. I would just like to bear my testimony that I know the Book of Mormon is true. I am so grateful for that knowledge. And I know that the Lord's promises will come, and it depends on us. We can be a part of them, or we can be left behind, depending on whether we turn our hearts to him and seek him with all our heart, mind, might, and strength. I express my appreciation to you for the opportunity of being here. I love this area. I could move here and just enjoy living here. And I appreciate all the committee has done to help us. And I would just like to again express my love to you and my love to the Lord Jesus Christ for all he has done for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.